Hello everybody, happy St. Patrick's Day. Our next camera is the Fujifilm Instax 210. It was made from approximately 2009 to 2014. 2014 was when the uh, Instax Wide 300 was introduced. It uses the Instax Wide film, ISO 800, with images that are 62 by 99 millimeters. This guy is a zone focus camera, has two zones, and on this one you select it here on the side and it uses the motor to move the lens for you. Uh, the zones are 0.9 to 3 meters and 3 meters to infinity. It's a plastic two element Fujinon lens, it's 95 millimeters. Uh, this guy has an electronic shutter goes from 1 64th to 1 200th of a second. Uh, the aperture, it's not a very bright camera since it's using 800 film. It's f14. Most of the info I've found online says that it's fixed at f14, at but if you defeat this little door switch here, this tiny little tab does it, you can work the camera with the back open and by shining a little flashlight into the sensor, it definitely stops down and then put my finger over, over it so it thinks it's really dark. It's as open as it gets. So the uh, aperture is also adjustable on this guy. The manual just says uh, F14. It's not much of a manual though. It's one of those things that's two pages and the two pages are six languages. So you don't get a lot of information. The manual does say that uh, this goes from light value 10.5 to light value 15. So doing some calculation, and I found an online calculator. I'll put it down in the description. 164th at f14, so that would be the dimmest light. Um, that comes out to light value 10.5 at ISO 800. And I won't get into the difference between exposure value and light value right now. Um, and 1 200th at F32 comes out to 14 and change. Call it light value 15 at ISO 800. And this is the exposure sensor right here. This other one below the viewfinder is for the flash. The predecessor to this camera, the uh, Instax 200 had the light sensor on the end of the lens, which is nice for filters and things. But then they made a close-up adapter for this, and I guess it was going to block the, uh, the light sensor, so they moved it to the body. It's got a really simple viewfinder. All it has is a little pill mark in the middle um, to, to center your shot. I think they call it the target spot. And then when you first turn it on, see if it'll do it, this red LED comes on to let you know the flash is charging. It's not flash ready. You have to wait till the LED goes off. Um, the viewfinder is really good compared to the Lomo Instax Wide. But that camera, it's got interchangeable um, uh, viewfinder lenses, but they're plastic and they're really pretty crummy. Um, this guy is powered by four AA batteries. Another weak spot, there's a little tab on the battery door that breaks off really easily. That's why it's got this uh, pretty sad looking taint jo tape job on it. On the left, it's got the uh, LCD, which shows you your film count. It shows you which focus zone you've got. And then it's got this little pointer here for normal, lighten, and darken, and you do that with this uh, with this other button. And that goes, normal is normal, and the lighten and darken go up or down two-thirds of a stop. The, uh, the flash, what I've read is that if it's not showing anything in here, the flash is automatic, and that if the flash icon is on, it's always on doing fill flash. I don't know if I get a weird copy or if it's damaged, and it could be damaged. Um, but when I don't have the flash icon, even when I cover this completely, 
it doesn't fire. So at least on this copy of this camera, this is flash off and on. This one was dropped or something. You can see this uh, glue job and it's missing this trim piece here. But luckily the, the felt is still good so it does stay light tight. I tested this with a partial film pack that had been in the fridge for quite a while. So I'm not sure if I have some roller pressure problem or if it's just that the film, the developer goo was kind of dried out. But I wanted to run through this camera even though it's not in good shape and I don't have a lot to show because I want to tear into this. There are some good instructions online um, for basically hacking this, keeping the ejection mechanism motor and being able to take this off and put an old school, uh, usually a medium format so that you'll get the coverage and a lens shutter on it. So I want to try that. This one's not in great shape, but I wanted to run it through the paces in case I kill it. You never know, tearing into an old camera, sometimes you can fix it, sometimes you can modify it, sometimes it becomes a pile of parts. At any rate, I'll monkey with this and get on to the next camera. I'm shooting with a couple of different ones right now, and I will see you then.